live from London, England. It's the Cube covering .next Conference Europe 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Nutanix.next 2018 here in London, England. We're going to be talking about developers in this segment. I'm Stu and my co-host is Yup Piskar. Happy to welcome to the program two first-time guests. Bala Kuchibotla is the general manager of Nutanix Era, and sitting next to him is Greg Muscarella, who recently joined Nutanix as vice president of products uh, at, at Nutanix. Uh, both of you have been up on stage. Uh, Greg was talking about uh, Carbon and Cloud Native, and uh, of course, ERA is the database as a service. Uh, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank good to be here. Yeah. All right, so look, developers. Uh, you, you know, uh, we were thinking back, uh, you know, uh, I, I love the old meme, you know, developers, developers, developers. Uh, you know, <laughs> Balmer had it right. His yeah. style might not have been there. Uh, Microsoft, company that does quite well with developers. Um, mm -hmm. You know, my background is in the enterprise space. I'm an infrastructure guy that goes to cloud, and the struggle I've had a little bit is, you know, developers really work from the application down. <laughs> it's like, that's where they live, and as an infrastructure guy, it's a little uncomfortable for me. So maybe to set that stage, because, you know, I, I, I look at Nutanix, you know, at its core, you know, infrastructure's a big piece of it, um, but, you know, it's distributed architectures, it's built from the architecture from like really the hyperscale to type of environment, so help connect the dots as to you know where Nutanix plays with the developers, and then we'll get into your products and everything else after. Bala, you want to start? Cool. Okay. So as you know, Nutanix is definitely addressing the IT ops market. We kind of simplified storage, compute, networking, and build the infrastructure as service. Obviously, if you look at the private cloud, the IT operators are becoming the cloud operators, right. and then giving them to the developers. We are basically trying to build a cloud for IT operators so that they can present the cloud to the developers. Now that we have this infrastructure pretty much there for quite some time, we're now expanding the services to other things, the platforms, platform as a service. Now going back to the developer community, you will have the same kind of cloud-like consumption, that these cloud operators, that IT operators are providing the cloud to you, you as developers get the same kind of public cloud consumption like ability, that the way that you are trying to do EC2s and AWS and S3s and kind of stuff, EBS, you have the same kind of APIs for on Nutanix that you can spin off a VM, spin off a database, spin off a storage, and then do what you want to do, kind of stuff. So that's a natural journey for us, kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have to agree. Look, the world has changed quite a bit for developers, and it's gotten a lot better. If you look at the tooling, and what you can now do on your laptop and spinning up what would be a pretty complex environment from a three-tier application with a, a robust database, a, an app tier, and anything else you might have on the storage side, spin it up, break it down, and with your CI CD pipeline, you can have it deployed to production pretty rapidly. So what we look at doing is recre you know, recreating that experience that the cloud has really brought to those developers and having the same type of tooling for those enterprise grade applications that are going to be deployed you know, on that infrastructure that, that is needed in private data centers. So looking at, you know, one of the reasons why developers love cloud services so much, it's easy for them. Yeah. They can just consume it, it's very low friction, they don't even really you know, need to go through a purchasing process other than you know, credit card may be paid for themselves in the beginning. Right. So you know, low friction is really the key word here. So I'm wondering, you know, looking at the you know, Nutanix, the IT ops perspective, how are you kind of bringing that low friction into the developer world? Yeah, so yeah, I'll take the question. So essentially, uh, what I'm seeing is the world in the, in the enterprise world is very fragmented. People do in silos kind of stuff, as you rightly said, developers really want to be liberated from all this bureaucracy, right? So they really need a service kind of world where they can go click on it, they get their compute kind of stuff. There is a pressure on the IT ops to give that experience, otherwise people will flee to public law, yeah. as simple as that, right? So to me, the way I see is the IT ops, the DB ops, the traditional DB ops engineering, they are understanding the needs that, hey, you got, we got to be serviceified. We want to provide that kind of service-like interface to our teams who are consuming us kind of stuff. So the, this software, Nutanix as the enterprise cloud software, lets them create their own private cloud and then give those services to the developers kind of stuff. So it's a natural transition as a company for us. We got to start from the, the cloud operators. Now we are exposing the cloud services from the cloud operators to the cloud consumers, essentially the developers. Yeah, Greg, uh, 
Up on stage, uh, you talked about cloud native, and uh, your premise is that you know cloud native is is a term for a methodology, not necessarily that it's born in the cloud. Maybe help explain that a little bit, and uh, you know, we, we think you know Nutanix is mostly in data centers today, so you know, what, why isn't this just saying no, 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 we can be cloud native too? Yeah, you know? well, fair point, and I think you know we're not alone in that as well. And being uh, an enterprise infrastructure company that was looking at. Uh, enabling cloud native applications, cloud native architectures within the private data center. So hey, look, it's really, it's a form of doing distributed computing, right? And that's the core to it, right? So you have a you know, stateless, ephemeral infrastructure, you're not upgrading things, you know, you're blowing it away and rebuilding it. There's some core things like that that will move across, whether it be in, in the cloud or on-prem. And of course you need tooling for that, right? Because that's not, that's not the methodology most enterprise developers or, or operators have really gone through, right? So everything's, everything's pets not much cattle, and we're really trying to change that quite a bit, and that's, that's both enabling technology, but it's also the practices that people will deploy. And what we're actually seeing is, it's not so much us trying to sell this, it's more like, hey, we're used to this in the cloud, why can't we do this on-prem in our, our private data center where we have all of our data and the other services that we need to interact with, like that's where the demand's really coming from. So it's that massive data they want to interact with, with the type of architecture that they've gotten used to for rapid development and deployment. So one of the things, you, so you, you mentioned pets versus cattle. Uh, one of the things I've been seeing from you know, an IT ops perspective is you need a good you know, ecosystem of management products around your, you know, your pets or your cattle to be able to make it cattle, right? Yep. If you don't have the tooling, you're going to do manual interaction and it's going to become pets. So I'm wondering, you know, in that cloud native space, how are you helping the IT ops um, to actually make it a cattle experience in you know, terms of management or monitoring or backup, stuff like that? Okay. So, you know, a lot of that is surrounded around Kubernetes, right, as a center of mass. So it's not just us doing it, it's us pulling in a lot of the support and ecosystem that is being built by the community for that and, and leveraging that piece. And then we have other things we'll either add on to that as it integrates with our platform and some of the capabilities there, or things that we may do uh, just, again, pure open source. I'll give you a couple examples of that. So I mentioned Epoch on stage, right? Yeah. So it's sort of something that brings additional metrics to Prometheus, right? So in addition to CPU and memory uh, storage consumption, you're actually getting latency and other more business metrics that you might be using to trigger things in Kubernetes like auto-scaling, right? I don't necessarily always scale on CPU or memory, maybe it's a customer experience that's difficult to measure. The other thing is because we have the storage layer underneath, you know, we look at doing things like, again, it's early in Kubernetes, but snapshotting from within Kubernetes, right? So if we have a CSI provider, why not from within Kubernetes let an application or a container trigger a snapshot underneath our storage layer will take that snap and then it becomes an object that's available for, from within Kubernetes. So there's a whole lot of things happening. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to add so, a couple of comments to that. This pets versus cattle is standardization, right? Like we're yeah. talking about yeah. it. Like in typical old legacy enterprises, there are, let's take the example of databases. Like every application team owner has their own databases. They were trying to patch, they were trying to do management around it kind of stuff. But if you, when we do a couple of surveys, like we looked at around 2,400 databases for a typical company, they have 400 different configurations of the software. It's like this is one of the biggest companies that we, we're talking about kind of stuff. With that kind of stuff, they cannot manage cloud, obviously. This is not no more a cattle kind of stuff. But how do you bring that kind of standardization, right? That is where the era as a product is actually coming into this. We are trying to standardize but when you try to standardize this database environments for on-premise uh, cl yeah. enterprise cloud, you have to do it at their terms. What I'm what I'm trying to say is, when you try to go for public cloud, you have this catalog 11.204 or 12.202 12, 12, 12, 12, PSC5. You can only create databases with whatever the software the public cloud guys are doing it. But on-premise needs are slightly different. Mm -hmm. So that is where Nutanix era and these products will come into. We yeah. allow people to create the cloud and then we allow them to create their own catalog of software that they, they can standardize. So that is what I call standardization at their customer terms. Right? That's what we're trying yeah, to do. And, and let me add to that though, it's, yeah. it's also brings in this convenience, because not only is it coming up with standardized, but we made it even more convenient, right? Because now a developer can go provision their own database, they're going to get a standard blueprint or a standard uh, configuration for what that is, and so you've made it easier for developers and you're getting something that is more cattle-like. 
Yeah. yeah. Ba Bala, I, I think you're in a good uh, seat to be able to actually give us a little bit of independent commentary. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the movement of databases mm -hmm. is one of the hottest topics in, in the industry. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen whether Andy Jasty was sparring back with Larry Ellison, uh, you know, at, at reInvent this week, but uh, you know, we've been watching the growth of things like you know, Postgres and uh, you know, a lot of these changes, you know, era sits uh, you know, clearly in that space. So yeah. what are you seeing from customers? You know, the modernization of applications is you know, what I call the long pole in the tent. It's the toughest thing for me to be able to do. I've said we usually want to first, you, know, you modernize your platform, Nutanix helps with that, yep. Public Cloud helps yep. with that, and then yep. I can modernize my application. Yep. You know, database tends to be, the, it's the stickiest application yep. in, that we have in the industry. Yeah. So, so, what are you seeing? Yeah, so yeah. There, are, uh, there are two classes of applications we see. This is, is completely greenfield. Yeah. You're starting off completely. People love cloud-like experience and cloud-native databases. That's where the public cloud can kind of try to kind of help them. But if you see, 70 to 80 percent of the money still is with all the traditional apps. Like, you know, you're trying to now cloudify them. The cloud-native stack that we talk about, the cloud-native database, is not going to be the game. Like you really need to think about how do you kind of take this big giant databases that are there with oracles and uh, DB tools and kind of stuff, but give the cloud-like experience, right? So that will be a very difficult game for any public cloud vendor. That's why you don't see rack provisioning in AWS is still not there, or even if GCP natively. Oracle does that, but a little, little bit difficult. Data gravity forces people to come to on-premises. That's my, my humble take on this, right? But how do you build, how do you make this Gray, gray area, I call it a brown field, and convert them into more of a consumer, consumer centric kind of stuff. That's where ERA actually tries to play it. It has two roles that if you have existing databases, we turn to kind of convert them into more of a cloud-like databases for you. Or if you have a green field, then we can get you directly onto the cloud native experience. Or if you're trying to migrate from one technology to other technology, definitely we would like to help it. These are the three things that we try to do through ERA kind of stuff. Yeah. So looking forward, you know, we're starting out with databases, you know, uh, making that simple, making that small, so that there's you know, less friction in that. So maybe a question for Greg. So what, what's the future for Nutanix in you know, enabling other services, other cloud-like services on a Nutanix platform going forward? In addition to databases? Exactly. Yeah, so you know, we're a big proponent of standard APIs, as I talked about, right? So we have that in storage for a long time. That makes things easy. With databases, we have a standard client talking to standard database backends. As we see other core building blocks, those are the kind of things that we're going to want to build and deliver as well. So S3 is a de facto standard for object storage, for instance, so people are following that. You look at PubSub with Kafka APIs, Druid. I think there's a whole bunch of things, especially from the Apache project, that have become sort of de facto standards. So really it's like, okay, well, which building blocks are needed by developers to build these applications that they want, and how do we really work with the community to establish those as open standards? Because we, we really want, you know, I talked about the portability quite a bit, so we don't want anyone locked into our stack or anyone else's stack. It's like, hey, let's build with the best toolkits, let's use standard open APIs, and then developers yeah. get what they need, which is portability, or run the application where they want to run it. Yeah. So that's yeah. our, yeah. our strategy yeah. so of going forward. To sum it up, we have EC2 equivalent, which is AHV. We have EBS equivalent. We have our called Acropolis block services. We have S3 equivalent, which is called buckets. We have database RDS equivalent. We have ERA. And now we are going with containers, which we call Carbon. So we are trying to kind of look at the critical services for anyone, especially for developers, to say that, man, it's all ecosystem. It's not like one piece, single piece. It's not just compute, it's not just storage, but it's the ecosystem of services that we need to kind of yeah. I want to just come back to what we were talking about at the beginning, uh, the relationship with developers. How much of what Nutanix does is really kind of the IT ops that then enables developers? How much direct developer engagement is it? Uh, like, you know, is there development activity here at the conference going on that we should know about? Uh, I, I know that Nutanix goes to a lot of the developer shows, um, but maybe if you can give us some commentary on that. Okay. Yeah, I can start that. It's, it's a path, right? So currently, we certainly have the bulk of our interactions are going to be on the IT operation side. And so it's only through them, because their customers are the developers, that we really interact primarily today. But you should see that changing quite a bit. And I think that you'll see that with the tools that we're providing directly to developers to interact with, you know, through the APIs like they have with ERA. So for instance, if IT is deployed ERA internally, then if I want a database, I can go straight to those APIs or command line to grab those things. And you'll see that continuously be a trend as we let developers interact directly with our products. Just, just to give you the example, right? Within the company, within Nutanix, we are drinking our own champagne, right? So we are operating a private cloud, 
and we're exposing our APIs to all our developers. Today, if someone wants a database in Nutanix, they go to a control plane and say, I want a database, right? That's the API. How the infrastructure is getting, it's a means to an end for them, right? So that's how we are going with our customers to, hey, here is how you build your private cloud, here is how you expose all your service endpoints for different services, and your developers just need to enjoy them. And then there's a billing aspect of it, that's the nuance that private clouds need to deal with. How do they charge the developers? How do they charge uh, meter and kind of stuff that people will have to work through. Kind of stuff. Yeah, so you know, I, I definitely heard uh, when, when I've talked to all the product teams, especially everything in the Zy Cloud, you know, extensibility with APIs is built into everything you're doing. So uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Greg, we're going to be catching up with you and the Nutanix team in two weeks at the KubeCon show uh, in Seattle. To yep. So thanks so much for joining us. Bala, uh, pleasure. Thanks for giving us all thank the you. update. And uh, thank you. We're going to be back with more coverage here uh, from Nutanix.next 2018 in London. I'm Stu Miniman, and Yup Piskar is my co-host. Going to be doing a Dutch session uh, uh, in a second, so be sure to stay with that first foreign language uh, interview on theCUBE, and thank you for watching. Thanks.